High altitude environments pose a number of difficulties to humans. Research on human evolution can help us gain insights into how we deal with the physiological challenges of high altitudes. Due to the thinning of the atmosphere with elevation gain, areas of high altitude have much less oxygen than areas near sea level. The low pressures and lack of oxygen can cause altitude sickness, which brings serious health problems. Emilia Huerta Sanchez, a postdoc in the Nielsen lab at UC Berkeley, studies altitude adaptation from a genetic and evolutionary perspective. She explains the consequences of altitude sickness. You can experience headaches or trouble sleeping, and, but there are some serious consequences that can potentially be fatal. Yet several groups of people around the world live in high altitude environments and hardly experience altitude sickness. The most well-known groups are populations from Tibet in the Himalayas how do these people physiologically cope with the low oxygen of their home regions, which can rise over 13,000 feet in elevation? The main goal of the study was to identify the genes in the um, Tibetan genomes that have contributed uh, to their ability to adapt to a high altitude environment. How did you conduct your research? What did you measure? So we have collaborators at the Beijing Genomics Institute in Shenzhen in China and they collected uh, DNA uh, from uh, 50 Tibetan individuals and they sequenced the DNA. Then we compared the DNA sequences of the Tibetan individuals to DNA sequences from Han individuals and also Danish individuals. What we wanted to look for is for um, regions in the genome that had a, a signature in the Tibetans that was unique to their population. You looked at hundreds of genes in this study. How did you figure out which ones were truly connected to altitude tolerance? Look for genes that had a special signature of um, positive selection that was unique to the Tibetan population by comparing them to the other populations. We identified several genes that we think are involved in the response to hypoxia. One of the most striking genes that we identified is called EPAS1. And the statistic that we designed to detect the signature basically measures the, the length of this branch, which is basically a measure of the divergence time between Tibetan and Han. And what we find for this gene is that relative to other genes in the genome, this gene has a really large branch length. What does the EPAS1 gene do? It's a gene that orchestrates the, the response uh, to low oxygen environments. EPAS1 is a transcription factor. So what that means is that EPAS1 goes around and binds other genes either to express more of those genes or to stop the expression of some of the genes. What made the EPAS1 gene stand out from the others? In the EPAS1 locus, we found, we found two mutations that have a really large frequency difference between the Tibetan population and the closely related Han population. So here I'm showing you the, the frequencies of all the mutations that we identified in the Tibetan and the Han populations. And so this is the Tibetan frequencies and these are the Han frequencies. These two mutations here are in the EPAS1. The Tibetans have a frequency of about 91% while the Han is at 13%. It's very difficult to explain that just by chance. Because the frequency differences are too big to be explained by chance, they must be explained by natural selection. Natural selection occurs when the environmental conditions favor the survival of individuals with one form of a trait over another. In this case, a variation in the EPAS1 gene allows the body to better cope with lower oxygen. Individuals with this version of the gene are more likely to survive and pass that gene to their children, but only in high altitude environments. What do the two mutations in the EPAS1 gene actually do in the body? The answer may be surprising. The physiological response to high altitude involves increasing the number of red blood cells because red blood cells contain a protein called hemoglobin that binds oxygen and transports it to the tissues. So by increasing hemoglobin concentration, we can maintain function in the body. This makes it more difficult for blood to flow throughout the body and deliver essential oxygen to the structures that need it. 
This may seem counterintuitive, but actually, having more red blood cells and more hemoglobin makes blood thicker. When we correlate the genotypes at those mutations with the physiological measurements, such as hemoglobin concentration, we find that uh, the most frequent genotype tend to have hemoglobin concentrations that are lower. That makes sense from what we know about the Tibetan's response to high altitude. They do not tend to increase hemoglobin concentration. Over several generations, this beneficial version of the EPAS-1 gene became very common in the Tibetan Highlander populations, which helps explain why they are so well adapted to life at high altitude. Altitude adaptation is just one example of the many ways humans have evolved to survive in diverse habitats around the globe. Although it may not be obvious, humans are still evolving today through the action of natural selection. For the National Evolutionary Synthesis Center, this is Understanding Evolution and Evolution in the News.